6 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The caretaker prime minister has launched the establishment of Pakistan e Rozgar co working centers to promote the IT sector. The caretaker information minister says the government is resolute in its commitment to combat terrorism and violent extremism. The International Court of Justice has started hearing South Africa's case against Israel over committing genocide of Palestinians. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, various protest demonstrations were held in Jammu region today against anti-people policies of the Narendra Modi-led Indian government. The United Nations Security Council has passed a resolution demanding Yemen's Houthis to end attacks in the Red Sea. Pakistan will play the first T20 Cricket International of the five-match series against New Zealand in Auckland tomorrow. And now the news in detail. The caretaker Prime Minister Anwarul Haqqaqar has launched the establishment of Pakistani Rozgar co-working centres across the country to facilitate freelancers and promote the IT sector. Addressing the launching ceremony of the tech destination Pakistan in Islamabad this afternoon, he said the initiative is aimed at creating an ecosystem where talented individuals could thrive. He said these centres, supported by interest-free loans, assistance and training, would help enhance the capacity of the youth. He said tech destination Pakistan offered a unique opportunity to holistically examine the theme and its significant role to boost Pakistan's economy. The Prime Minister said the government is focusing on information technology sector for sustainable economic development. He said the government was committed to promote the IT industry under the umbrella of the Special Investment Facilitation Council. Anwarul Hakkakar said the government was working to materialize the vision of digital Pakistan through multiple cross-sectoral digital transformation initiatives. Earlier speaking on the occasion, the caretaker Minister for Information Technology, Dr. Omar Saif, said 10,000 centers will be established across Pakistan. He said 5,000 centers each will be set up at the academic institutions and private sector. He said under this initiative, interest-free loans will be provided. Dr. Umar Saif emphasized on giving the IT industry skilled manpower as per the needs of the global competitive tech ecosystem. The caretaker Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Murtaza Salangi, says the government is resolute in its commitment to con- combat terrorism and violent extremism. He was addressing the launching ceremony of the annual Security Assessment Report by Pakistan Institute for Conflict and Security Studies in Islamabad today. The minister said Pakistan has repeatedly asked the interim of one government to address Pakistan's counter-terrorism concerns, especially the space and safe havens available to the militant groups like Tariq e Taliban Pakistan to operate in and from Afghanistan. He said Pakistan has also raised the issue of access to sophisticated weapons in Afghanistan to these militant groups besides involvement of Afghan nationals in anti-state activities in Pakistan. Responding to a question regarding JUIF Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman's trip to Afghanistan, the minister clarified that the visit was unofficial. To a question about negotiations with terrorists, Murtaza Sulangi made it clear crystal clear that the state will not hold talks with them till they lay their arms and accept and recognize the constitution of Pakistan. The Ministry of Energy and Power Division has termed the news circulating in the media about handing over of distribution companies to army as incorrect. In a press release today, the ministry clarified that neither there is any change in the management of discos nor are they being handed over to any other institution. It further stated that there are no plans in place to hand over distribution companies to any institution of the states. 
The Benazir Income Support Programme spokesperson has warned citizens to be cautious about the fraud being committed through fake messages on social media and cell numbers. He said all Benazir Income Support Programme messages are sent from 8171 only and those re received from other numbers are fake messages. The spokesman said the real messages from the Benazir Income Support Programme do not promise provision of any financial assistance without verification and documentation. He said the Benazir Income Support Programme also never warns any beneficiary to expel her or him from the programme. Any information about the Benazir Income Support Programmes can be obtained from the helpline number 0800 264 the Benazir Income Support Programme offices established in every district can also be visited by citizens for the purpose. This is Radio Pakistan. The International Court of Justice has started hearing South Africa's case that Israel is committing genocide in its war on Gaza. South Africa had lodged an urgent appeal to the International Court of Justice to force Israel to immediately suspend its military operations in Gaza. The court is hearing South Africa's arguments today and Israel's response tomorrow. More than 23,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7. Pakistan has supported the application filed by South Africa before the International Court of Justice against Israeli atrocities in Gaza. The Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zahra Baloch at the weekly news briefing in Islamabad today said Pakistan considers this legal action timely and an important step towards holding Israel accountable for its well-documented atrocities unleashed against the Palestinian people. She said Pakistan shares the concerns raised in the application by South Africa. The spokesperson reiterated Pakistan's call for an immediate and unconditional ceasefire in Gaza and an expeditious delivery of humanitarian assistance to the Palestinians. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, numerous protest demonstrations were held in Jammu region against the anti-people policies of the Narendra Modi-led Indian government. The activists of Jammu and Kashmir National Conference staged a protest at Mankot in Mendar area of Punch district against the absence of fundamental democratic rights in the territory. They raised serious concerns over the growing corruption of the occupation regime installed by the Modi government in Kashmir. Another protest was held in Aridgatu on the foothills of Pir Panjil mountain range against the massive hike in power bills. The private school's body also staged a protest against the anti-education policies of the occupation regime. Employees of Life Insurance Corporation and Road Transport Corporation also held separate protests in Jammu in support of their demands. Meanwhile, the old party's Huryat Compton spokesperson in a statement issued in Sirinagar said the dark night of Indian oppression in occupied Jammu and Kashmir will eventually end and the Kashmiri people will see the dawn of freedom. In a statement, the spokesman said the people of Kashmir are demanding their inalienable right to self-determination but the Indian Hindutva regime is hell-bent upon using repression against the legitimate and indigenous resistance movement of the Kashmiris. The United Nations Security Council has passed a resolution demanding Yemen's Houthis end attack on ships in the Red Sea. The United States and Japan sponsored the resolution. Eleven members of the council voted for the measure, calling it on Houthis to immediately seize all attacks. The four members, Algeria, China, Mozambique and Russia, abstain. No one voted against. In Somalia, the armed group Al-Shabaab has seized a United Nations helicopter along with about eight people. The helicopter landed in the territory held by the group in central Somalia. Cricket. Pakistan will play the first T20 international of the five-match series against New Zealand in Auckland tomorrow. 
The match will start at 10 past 11 in the morning. And finally, the weather report. Mainly cold and dry weather is expected in most plain parts of the country, while very cold conditions are likely in northern parts in North Balochistan during the next 12 hours. Dense fog and smog is likely to persist in the plain areas of the Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Upper Sen. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and you can also watch the library streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.